Hey guys, this is Alex from Wilkinson Audio. We're going to continue uh, the process of mixing this track and uh, we're working on the drums. So let's get everything else out of the way because we don't need it. So we can uh, collapse all the tracks and then just mute them. Just mute the master bus for all of them. Um, so here's the effects track, which we don't need. And here's the vocals, which we also don't need. And then we have, uh, we're left with just the drums. Typically, if somebody sent you something like this, uh, especially if they didn't send you MIDI, like they just sent you the sounds, that, that probably means that that's what they want you to be using and you probably shouldn't change them without asking because there's going to be a certain amount uh, of, well, if they're real drum tracks and stuff, you definitely should ask if, if they're okay with your sample replacing them unless it's absolutely essential or something like that. Um, but with this, there's um, velocities used in the midis. And uh, so I'll show you, like over here, there's uh, different velocities in the, in the MIDI used, uh, which is going to, which is, you know, akin to a, a performance, like a humanized performance or, or like, like a human performance. So he's set this up a way that sounds good to him. So if I just switch the sample engine out, it's going to take his vision and change it because it's like the superior is going to react to these velocities differently than slate or whatever he was using will and it's going to change what uh what he had in mind he might not be pleased with what the results are so you should always make sure to uh you know ask if you're if it's okay for you to totally change the drum sound basically or uh, what they'll let you what they want you to do um so and for educational purposes, like we could totally just use these samples provided, but for educational purposes, we'll use uh, Superior. And because, as I said, I got Progressive Foundry, and it seems like it's going to sound pretty cool, so it'll be cool to try that. Um, you'll notice that the drums are on four different tracks here. I imagine that's just so he could do some quick uh, writing just inside of the track view here. Instead of going into the MIDI editor, he could just kind of go like this and then copy and paste or whatever and then kind of just do some quick editing that way um, on the different tracks for the different uh, stuff. So that's cool, but it, cause, it's, uh, it causes one problem. Like which track would we put Superior on? Um, you know, it, it, it doesn't really work like this or it would be ideal to put four instances, of, four instances of Superior on all these tracks. That would use a lot of RAM and it'd be kind of unwieldy. 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 Sounds like a word, pretty sure it is. Um, so we're going to either consolidate these or put them in a bus track and I'll show you how to do those. Uh, there's three ways I can think of to do it to make a lot more sense, so I'll show you those two. One is going to uh, select these tracks, file, export project MIDI, uh, entire project, selected tracks only, merge to single MIDI track, and then you would export that and then you bring it back into the project and it would be uh, all the tracks together as one track. Um, a quicker way to do it is to just take a new folder track like, or a new track and just put these under it and then they'll all automatically route to this track anyway. So then we could just put Superior on here. Uh, one thing though, uh, when we create Superior, we're going to uh, go insert virtual instrument on new track. And the reason we're going to do this is because it'll take care of all of our routing for us that we're going to need. Um, I might make another video that goes over the routing and how you would do this manually, but this is just a much more convenient way to do it. So it's going to create a bunch of new uh, stereo tracks for us and uh, additional channels on the tracks uh, that will that will need to route out all of the different microphones from Superior onto uh, tracks in the DAW. Okay, so we'll load up Progressive Foundry. And we'll just use the default kit, I guess, because I don't really want to spend an hour like checking all the samples and picking a bunch. So we'll just say this is what we're going to use. And uh, everything sounds cool. There's some symbols and stuff. We'll make that a China because stacks are pretty crazy. Maybe a little too crazy for this production. Um, and we're going to now check out the mixer. And we can see, oh, yeah, and as you can see, it's created a zillion new tracks, uh, a bunch of stereo buses, all the way from uh, stereo 1 and 2 to stereo 31 and 32. And these allow us to route out anything from this mixer in Superior to the DAW. So 
this stereo one and two, we'll, we'll call this kick mics. Like if you wanted to, you could separate the kick mics out. Like you could actually change it so that you have like, you could have your RE20 on one track and then the B52 on another track, um, Beta 52. Um, but I basically just use these as buses and then I just kind of mix them here and then I like to keep the processing as simple as possible. Um, I find that's easiest. So I, I typically just kind of bust them out and then control the volumes independently here. So we'll do the RE20, uh, B52, the, D, the D112, and kick out whatever that is in the kick sub, whatever that happens to be, will all be uh, routed to one and two, which will be our kick mics. Um, and then we will do, uh, next is snare drum top condenser, snare drum top dynamic, which will be the same thing. We'll just call it snare top and we'll route those out to three and four and these ones out to three and four because they're both snare uh, snare top mics and then we'll just uh, blend to, our, to taste in here to, with what we want that track to kind of sound like. And then for the snare drum bottom, which usually is processed differently, we'll also route that out to uh, five and six, which will be the next track. So we'll have independent control of the bottom and the top of the snare. Okay, so we have hi-hat, which we'd want, to, we'd want on its own track for sure. Shouldn't really be grouped with anything because sometimes you want to automate your hi-hat, bring it out for certain parts, bring it back for other parts, uh, stuff like that. So it's a good thing to, to be able to automate. Um, it also can't really share much processing with other instruments. It wouldn't really work that way. Uh, here's all our toms. These should all be output separately. Uh, so 9 and 10 is going to be rack tom 1. Okay, so this will be tom 1. And actually, I don't really know how many of these toms we even need. I'm going to, I'm going to use, I, I don't think we really need, I think it's an 8 inch tom, and I, that's pretty high and kind of odd for, well, you could, but that'd be up to the drummer's preference. But a more normal drum setup would be this, which is a 10 inch tom, I believe. So we'll output that as tom 1. We'll output, we'll, we'll output tom, or rack tom 3 as... 11, 12, and we'll just call it Tom 2. This might get confusing, but. And then we'll uh, output floor Tom 1 as Tom 3, and that's 13, 14. So we'll do that. And uh, like this is pretty typical because then you're going to have like 10, 12, and 14. I think that's what it is. Actually, it might not be. Actually, that probably sounds better, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. that doesn't really... If you, if you use these toms, it doesn't really resolve very well. It's kind of a weird interval group. Uh, but these are kind of better for that. That kind of sounds finished. Um, so this is a 9 by 13. So 13, 14, and this is going to be 16. So let's map that out. So the last three toms will be the, the three toms we use. Okay, so we'll just change these to none here. So, so these last three, Rack Tom 3, Floor Tom 1, Floor Tom 2, will be the toms that we choose for this production. And I have to figure out, again, what those were. So 9 and 10 is going to be our Tom 1. 11 and 12 will be our Tom 2. And 13, 14 will be our Tom 3. Yeah, okay, cool. Because I, I don't think he programmed for more than three toms, because most people don't. Like, because most drummers don't use more than three toms. Uh, we could output the ride if we need to. Uh, send it out. And it's not a bad idea. You know, same thing with automation and stuff. You might want a ride mic separate. Um, overheads. So I'll group all these overheads, and we'll do the same submix thing that we were doing for, for the uh, kick mics. So all of the overhead stuff will, will become um, 1718. Okay, so our RCA overhead, U47 overhead. I don't know what overhead drummer is. Might be something cool, might not. 
But either way, we don't want it going to... Uh, you don't want to leave anything going to out 1 and 2 because then it'll come onto the, the kick track that we set up earlier. Um, we don't want that. Well, I'll send this anyway. I don't know what it is. We'll probably have to solo it and see if it sounds cool or not. Um, ambient mics. Uh, we'll set those up as well. We'll just call them room because that's essentially what they are. And we'll do the same thing again where we're going to submix to the to the tracks here. So we got... Um, actually, let's send out the close, the close room, let's do close room, far room. Okay, ambient close will be 2021, or sorry, 1920. Well, it should be anyway. 32, yeah, 1920, sorry, just getting a little confused here. Um, and then our far ones will all be uh, 21, 22. And if you want, you could use these uh, kit rear and under kit ones. We could check what they sound like, but I'm just trying to do this quickly here, so we'll we'll skip those for now and just stick with traditional kind of mic placements. Uh, 21, 22 is far room. Wait. Hang on one sec here. So our overheads are 17, 18. Our close room. Did I accidentally add this channel? Sorry, this is, I'm just getting myself confused here, but normally it's not this difficult. I'm just making it a little difficult here. So this should be our close room. And this will be our far room. Okay, so 2122 for all of our farm mics. Okay, cool. And uh, that should be good. So if we play this now, it should come out of all of the onto all these tracks for our the way we group things in our mixer here. And let's check this out. Actually, we'll have to do this too. We'll have to route the MIDI to the actual plugin. There we go. Okay, so we can hear, here's our kick mics, snare top, snare bottom, overheads, close room, far room, which is not working because I believe we actually have to, um, I believe we actually need to tell it to have bleed. And, oops. Okay, so we're going to have to do that for all of these. Uh... Because if there's no bleed into the, since they're distant mics, if there's no bleed into them, you don't really have those mics, so you have to enable it, if you're using this particular kit, I guess. But... Uh, I think if you load up the actual uh, full kit, like it'll have all of the bleed included and stuff like that, it's probably just kind of a monster on... Uh, the CPU usage and stuff. So our farm room should be working now. All right, and that's pretty cool. So we, from here, we can kind of start. Uh, I'll leave a couple of these tracks in case we want to route anything else out, but I'll get rid of these uh, last ones just for cleanliness. Cool. And from there, we should be ready to start actually mixing our drums, and uh, we'll do that in the, in the next video here. Cool.